and just let the arms just hang out to the side. The endoming of the diaphragm, <clears throat> we place our thumbs under the cupola of the diaphragm. We ask the patient to take in a deep breath, slowly exhale, and we press. And first we will test, just see what the hamstrings will do. Let this one down, Carl. So when you're doing these, in, in spondylolisthesis, these things are always just short. So when I bring up, these aren't bad, I can come to about here. But let's just do this technique again. The endoming of the diaphragm, you know, some of them, like I showed you, they may come 30, 40 degrees. This will be quite impressive to not only the patient, but to you yourself, doctor. Now, doming the diaphragm, place the thumbs under the cupola of the diaphragm. Take a deep breath, Carl, please. Exhale. Exhale. And as he does so, we are doming the diaphragm. Deep breath. Exhale. 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 That's doming of the diaphragm. I'll typically do that for, for maybe a minute to a patient. Then, legs down, please. Then just retest these hamstrings, and they'll be that dramatic. It, you won't believe this until you do it yourself. But when we have spondylolisthesis, and we have these short hamstrings, it's a beautiful thing to be able to stretch them with this ease for the patient. With, with the hamstrings lengthened, we can flex forward closer to 90 degrees. If they're short, you can only flex, say, 30, 40 degrees. You're putting more movement into the spondylolisthetic slip, thereby slowing the patient's heel. Doming of the diaphragm.